The work of artist Marsha Monroe Pippinger is at once painting, drawing, sculpture, and assemblage. When I teach about collage, I always talk about the fact that Picasso and Brock are credited with inventing collage in 1912, and I beg to differ with that always, because as far as I'm concerned, any kind of piecework throughout the centuries, taking all kinds of ephemera and discarded materials and fabrics and paper scraps and creating things out of them, for me, that's collage. I'm Marsha Monroe Pippinger, and I'm an artist, I'm a teacher, and I'm a teaching artist. I'm kind of the artist in residence here at the Reckworth Company. We have seven acres here at Reckworth. The building, of course, is old. It dates from the 1880s or 1890s. The Reckworth Company moved down here in 1895. There's a kitchen showroom here now. We have six kitchen designers, plus the lumber yard and the lumber staff and everyone who works here will bring clients up to meet me and see the studio and they enjoy that i think customers enjoy that too i have lots of room i have really good lighting it's all north life there's great storage it's just a really good space the building the people the surroundings are wonderful what's my favorite my favorite part of art making the first favorite part is the idea, which often comes from my reading, reading books, articles, or a phrase that I hear that will capture me. And from there, it's got to roll around in my head a little bit. I'll make sketches and drawings, and I put the drawing on canvas. Sometimes it's to scale, sometimes not. And then the second favorite part is getting in there with the paper. I start pulling the papers that I think will work and sort of creating a little pile and start moving things around. I don't commit right away and I use thousands of glue sticks because the nice thing about a glue stick is I can put a dab of glue down, I can put the paper down, I can remove it if I want to, if I change my mind or I want to move it or whatever. You can mix papers, you know, I layer them and mix them so it's a little bit like mixing paint. I have a huge collection of paper, huge. In the beginning, I used tissue paper and cheap magazine papers, and they fade. They don't last, so I use mostly handmade papers today. And I do use paper from magazines, but it's gotta be a high-quality magazine with high-quality inks. And then sometimes I incorporate other things, bits and pieces of rock or tile or rust. Yellow's my favorite color. I'm pretty sure there's a touch of yellow in probably every single piece I've made. I really like to work big, like 36 by 48. That's three by four feet. That's a nice size, I like that size. I've got these collage tapestries that I've been making and they're bigger, they're four by six, five by seven, five by eight. But I have leftover collage pieces that have innate nice little compositions I've been making pendants from those. So they're about two by three inches. So two by three inches up, you know, as big as I can manage. The most challenging part about creating a collage might be knowing when it's finished. I think it's really easy to overdo. And there are times when I felt like I need somebody standing behind me to tell me when to stop. You should leave a little mystery when you put in all the information, you end up boring people. And you need to let the viewer do a little work. And so I try to keep that in mind. That's one of my mantras, so to speak, for art making is to try and stop just a little bit short of finished. And I think that works. About five, six years ago, I was asked to design a prayer wall for my church, which is Westminster Presbyterian Church here in Dayton downtown. And I designed it to fit with the architecture of our sanctuary, and it's made out of wood. And I designed it so it looked like it had grown kind of organically. So it had sort of a random pattern, 
and so you could tuck your prayer into the cracks among the wooden bricks. And the pastors remove all the prayers about once a month, I think, and nobody reads them. It's between you and whoever you believe in, and they're burnt. Our senior pastor invited people to come up and put their first prayer in the prayer wall, which I did, like everyone else. And I turned around and I looked down the center aisle of the church and people were lined up all the way down the entire length of the sanctuary out into the narthex. And I started to cry. And as you can tell, it still affects me. And I started thinking about walls and how walls can be positive. They don't have to be negative in connotation, that walls can protect and surround. And so I started a series called Redefining Walls of collages that are abstractions of walls. And I've been making them ever since. I've made literally hundreds of collages relating to that idea of redefining walls. And it was all because of this serendipity, this blessing that I had that I certainly didn't expect. There's a quote that I really like. Fine art is that in which the hand, the head, and the heart come together. And so if you can incorporate those three into your work, I think you've done a good thing.